I got the broken chain blues. I don't know what to do. Cause I got them damn broken chain blues. Okay, boys and girls, it's that time. Use Motorized presents cool motorized toys. In five, four, three, two, uh, one. Yeah, let's go. Come on. Hey, boys and girls, I just want to say I apologize. I want to apologize to everybody. Boy, howdy, did I ever screw the pooch on this one here? This is my third time trying this live cast. First time my sound dropped out. Second time it was a little too dark and I dropped the F-bomb leading right into it. And I don't really want to say that so much. So, uh, although I did. And you know what? Speaking of dropping the F-bomb, right? Let's check this out. This causes more grief to people when they first start riding their little motorized bikes. This stuff right here, particularly this one right here. That's the, the kit chain, the 415 chain. You get your little motorized bike going and BAM! We don't even get it going most of the time. You break the damn chain right off the bat. I'm here to help you. I feel your pain, okay? So, let's go over chains 101 as they pertain to your motorized bicycle, okay? So, this chain right here is the standard pedal chain. Let's call it, it's the number 410 chain, do you believe, for the motorized bike, and that's the one that goes on the pedal chain. Now, it has a lot in common with the kick chain. The pitch, the distance between the pins here is the same, the exact same. What's different is the width and the inner link here is different. You're a little bit narrow here. This little screwdriver here will just barely fit into this gap here. And this is the 415 chain here, whereas the, the, the width of the screwdriver will fit in there with just a little hair here. And then this is this bad boy here. This is I call this the super chain. This is the number 41 chain here. And the inner link here, you got some extra room, okay? So that, that may help some of you out. Um, if you got a little wiggle room there, but a little wiggle room's okay, but you go getting a lot of wiggle room, then we got a big damn problem, okay? So let's go on here. See, so with your chain, you've got the different parts here, okay? So let's start with the picture there, the outer link. Let's do this here just like they got it here, okay? So this is the outer link here because, hey, the plates are on the outside. Then we've got the inner link, which is on the inside, okay? You've got the inner plate. Now, the inner plate has a bigger hole, and the reason why it has the hole is you've got the, well, so you got the rollers there, but what holds the roller in place are the bushings. The bushings have to go through this larger hole, and then what goes inside of that bushing to hold everything together are the pins here, okay? So we now know a little bit about the anatomy of a chain. And then what, what, once uh, we uh, get our chain cut to length, broke to length, however you want to phrase it, then we're going to put the connecting link on. Now it's also, it's important to note when you put your chain on, you want this closed end of your connector link or your master link to be in the direction of travel. Why? Because if we flipped it around and let's say, this is the direction of travel. This bad boy's coming along. If it hits something, it could knock this uh, clip off and everything fall apart and you're singing the broken chain blues. So we, we don't want you doing that. So, so think about that when you install it. Basically, as well, to keep in mind when you put this bad boy on. So you've got your motor. Let's say you got, you know, let's get rid of this right here. Okay, so you've got your motor in the front here and the chain goes to the back wheel. The chain is going to be traveling towards the motor on the top. So you want the closed end pointing towards the motor and then it goes around the sprocket in the motor and it's going back to your rear sprocket. You want the closed end heading towards it. One of the things that it might be hitting is this wheel right here. So if the, the clip, the open part of the clip strikes, let's see, let me get this turn here, strikes 
your tensioner, it'll knock the, uh, the, uh, the clip off and you're going to be singing in broken chain blues. Might as well just travel with your harmonica, okay? So um, we've gone into that. So what causes these damn chains to break? Well, let's see here. Sorry about that. Okay, so what causes the damn chains to break? Well, first and foremost, it's the rag joint, the way it's installed. I can install a rag joint nowadays. I remember the first time I installed a rag joint, I went, I took that damn thing off four or five times. No instructions, you know, I, I just had to, to learn it on my own here. Um, the, the sprocket is dished, okay? So if you don't have your sprocket properly aligned, and a lot of it has to do with that rag joint, you're gonna have problems. So what I've learned to do over building a couple of hundred bikes here is uh, number, I don't go with the expense of, of putting the hub adapter on. In most cases, I'm fine with the rag joint. I build it, I put the rag joint on, I make sure that I get all of the bolts evenly tightened. I count the number of threads in the back where the bolt goes through the, the nylock nut. And if you, if you don't get the nylock nuts, throw them bastards away. But I make sure that all of the bolts are evenly tightened up. I have it installed on the wheel. I put it on the bike. And then let me show you this camera right here. So we install it on the bike. And what I then do, I will take a screwdriver and I'll put a screwdriver against the frame of the bike. And I'll get the screwdriver, whoop, pardon me, to where it's almost touching the sprocket and I spin it around. I spin the sprocket around and I note the side to side play. If you've got a lot of wobble in that chain and particularly if your wobble, sorry about that, if your wobble is any greater than the in inner width of the inner plates here, it's going to come off. Okay? So that is, is the biggest issue there. So check the link down below. I'll show you, uh, there, there's one where I go into a, a lot more detail, pardon me. I go into a lot more detail on how to set up your rag joint, how to make sure that things are tracking. We're, we're just giving you an overview here today. Now, the chain line, that, that's something else you want to keep in mind here. Um, you've got the motor, and then you got that sprocket back here. And what the chain is needing to do is go in a perfectly straight line from the sprocket in the back to your drive sprocket on the motor. So you've got your center line of the bike, then what we want to do, and then have the bike perfectly straight up and down. You've got your front sprocket, you've got the rear sprocket. If the rear sprocket, and I'm going to exaggerate, if it's way over here, even just a quarter of an inch off, that's enough. Remember that width of the inner, inner, uh, the inner plates? on your chain, if, if it's off enough, chain's not going to work. It, it, chain does not like to make right and left turns. It, it'll, it'll loop around and do stuff there, but it doesn't like to make those right or left turns. So you got to make sure that number one is what, when you install it, now let's see here. Sprocket, let's see, come on focus, focus. That's what they told me in school, huh? There we go. Alright, so you can see how this bad boy is dished here, okay? meaning the sprocket is pushed out, okay? So you got the flat part, whoop, you got the flat part here. And then you can see that the, the, where the teeth of the sprocket are, it's pushed out in that direction. Now that will give you the ability to, uh, you know, give you some wiggle room. So on most beach cruisers with the 2.125 inch wide tires, you're going to want to put this with the, the, the teeth of the sprocket outboard. Okay, put that outside, and that's going to help line things up. That will, you can keep your chain line in mind. Um, with your, uh, some of your mountain bikes as well, bikes with skinnier tires, you can flip it over and move it in a little bit here. But it still depends upon the seat tube and the like. Let's see. Let's get here. Okay. So the chain tensioner. If your chain tensioner, chain tensioner, is not properly set up, keeping in mind that chain line, okay? So your, your chain comes from the motor, it goes around the sprocket, then it rolls on your chain tensioner. Now if your chain tensioner is pushing or pulling that chain away from your chain line, your, your ideal chain line, that's going to be feeding that, trying to feed the chain off of the sprocket, and you're going to have problems. Um, 
Okay. Rubbers. In the motorized bike world, only rubber you should be using is to protect from making babies or getting STDs. Other than that, don't put rubber on your chain tensioner. Don't put rubber on your motor mounts. The motor starts wiggling, that chain will start vibrating, oscillating, you're gonna have problems. So no freaking rubber on the motor mount or your chain tensioner. Now, if your motor has any wiggle room, note I said, you know, the no, no rubber thing. If you've got a, any wiggle in your motor, you're, you're gonna be throwing the chain off. Duh, it's a, it's a no brainer. So let, let's go on here on the, uh, the chain tensioner. Let me, let me move my, my camera here. Get on that bike a little bit more here. Okay, so here's the standard chain tensioner, and they're okay. You want to be real careful with these chain tensioners that you, you get it properly tightened up, that you still have a little bit of gap left once you get it tight. I mean, you don't want to strip this thing here. Um, you, you do want to keep in mind, you know, you don't want to strip this out. If you strip it out, then it's going to give way. So you want to have it properly snugged up, and this one is not properly snugged up. It's just on there right now just to show how, how it goes on the bike. Um, we've also, this is one style of chain tensioner, and this is another style. So we've got uh, a worry about the chain tensioner slapping. Whoa, howdy. Let me check my one light here real quick. Pardon my butt here. Y'all listen to music or something. Sorry about that. My LED's kind of flaking out on me there. Okay, so um, so since we've, we've got some concerns about the chain tensioner flopping into the wheel, an option is the arch chain tensioner. Now this arch chain tensioner, let me get it all, get it right here, mounts from the chain stay to the seat stay and you've got infinite adjustment. Now one cool thing about this is, let's see here, let's go to this cam right here, let's see here, whoa, I did something with that. Yeah, hey, I even took notes and it's a uh, Kind of funny, I took notes and I'm doing this so poorly. <laughs> okay, so we've got, come on, focus, baby, focus. All right, cool thing about this style of chain tensioner here is you can dial this in here. If you get the chain properly tightened up and you got a little wiggle room in here, it's, it's, it's going to stay on there, okay? So if, if you've got your, your chain tensioners moved way too far one way or the other, your chain may want to, you know, give you some binding issues there. Um, so you can get it to float here, so to speak, and it'll find its center. But you still want to look at it from on top and, and make sure that both chains are, are equally, are, are directly, uh, the top chain is on top of the bottom chain. So this guy here is, is um, an ideal chain tensioner for, uh, for beginners. Check the link down below. I've got a link where you can find that. I think it's on eBay. So we've gone over the different uh, tensioners and the like. As well, like I said, check uh, the link down below. Um, I've got a video that goes into a little bit more detail on how to uh, set up the rag joint, has some uh, good uh, close-up angles on how to do that. Um, now this number 41 chain, which I, I do like, uh, you can uh, buy that. Check the link down below. If you can't find it at a local hardware store or a tractor supply or whatever, I'll be happy to sell you a piece of the chain uh, as well as the chain breaker tool um, for breaking the, the standard chain on the bike. This little Park CT5 tool is great. It won't break the big heavy drive chain, but it, it will break the, uh, the small chain. As well, the big chain breaker won't break the, the pedal chain. You need one of these little guys here. I've had this thing for six years, well worth the money. Um, I'll show you how to break, let me get on this camera here. And, Okay, so how do you break this bad boy here? Well, what you can do, if you don't have one of these handy dandy chain breaker tools here, what you can do is we've got the outer link here. That's where you break it. Your, 
your connector length. Pardon me, I feel like a monkey trying to mate with a football. Okay, so you break your chain. The connector link is going to take place of the outer link. So find where you need to break the chain. And you can grind off the pin. Grind it off, grind both of the pins off. Then you can, what I've done is like drill a hole into a piece of hard wood or in a piece of metal, lay the chain down. I've even done it with the socket. Where to put my socket? Let me get this out of the way. Well, I've even uh, used, uh, let's see here, just a small socket or even a, a hex nut. Put a hex nut on it, take you a, a pin, a punch tool, a pin, a pin punch, and a hammer and drive the pin out the rest of the way. Pop this off and then you can go ahead and break the chain. Or, like I said, if you've got this bad boy here, now you can see, where are we at? That guy there, that little pin there that this, this guy here, let's see here. As I screw this down, this pin right in here goes down, and that's what's going to drive these pins down. So you open it up, let me unscrew this. You open it up, you put it over the outer link that you want to break. These, this part here rests underneath the, uh, the inner plate. And you tighten this up. Let me try it like this here. See, that may be a little bit better. There we go. Tighten this up. And you can hear it pop. There you go. The plate, this plate here comes off. And you can check your chain apart there. All right, so we're good there. We're still streaming. We got sound. Life is good. Okay, so I hope I shared with you some of my uh, wisdom, some of my, my school of hard knocks of uh, singing them broken chain blues. If you got any questions, leave them down below. Hey, if you like my video, please give me, give me a thumbs up. That'll help more people see the video. Click subscribe. There's a notification bell down there. Check the links down below for where you can buy the chain, the chain tools as well see a little bit more in-depth video if you're having broken chain problems, give you some additional info beyond this. I want to thank each and every one of you for watching. Bye now. Y'all come back now, you hear?